Okay, I think we are up. So you can okay. begin. Okay, so uh, I'll be sharing my screen in a minute. Yeah, can we all see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, um, so good morning, everybody. Um, today, we'll be talking about data visualization with storytelling for improved business insights. Yeah, and part of the things that to be uh, working ourselves through today uh, is what data visualization is. You know, we'll be going for that to also discussing about what storytelling is with data, as well as why data visualization and storytelling is important and as well needed in businesses. You know, we'll also talk about transforming this data into a story, how to get started with storytelling with data, um, data visualization with storytelling techniques. And yeah, uh, so that's basically what we'll be talking about today. So first off, we'll be talking about what data visualization is. So um, data visualization is simply the visual representation of data. So we have data, uh, which could be figures or numbers, uh, but in data visualization, we are trying to um, represent this data uh, in a visual format. So it can also be considered as the practice of translating information into a visual context. You know, we've come across um, so many visualization, I believe, um, such as maps, graphs, charts, and the likes, right? So all of this visualization actually uh, makes data easier for the human brain to understand. So without this visualization, data wouldn't be easy to understand you know, as well as we then pull insights from this visualization as well. So visualization could be charts, they could be tables that are generated from a spreadsheet, or it could go well beyond those modalities to include any shapes, colors, sizing, you know, to draw visual focus to data finding. Just like we can see on our screen, um, the diagram on the side, you can see we have uh, various visualization there, right? Some of them are in forms of shapes. Some of them have some colors to them and sizing, right? So the main goal of data visualization is to make it easier to identify patterns, right? So we have a data and we are trying to identify patterns from that data. So this visualization actually makes it very easy to identify these patterns in a large data set, right? So data visualization is about communicating the substance of your metrics in a visual way. So heading on, we'll be talking about what storytelling with data is, right? We now know how data visualization works, what data visualization is. So um, the most important part of data visualization is storytelling, right? You wouldn't want to visualize your data without giving a story to it. So storytelling with data actually differs from data visualization because it requires communicators to offer a larger and a more holistic view of their message. So you have a data and you want to visualize this data. While you are visualizing this data, you'd want to tell a story with this data, right? And the essence of you telling a story with this data is for you to actually communicate a view of what you are trying to pass on. So you must focus first on your audience and structure a larger message before any visuals are rendered. So before you render any visualization to your audience, you must first focus on the audience and the message you are trying to pass. You know, there are other questions as 
that you'd be putting into consideration while you are visualizing this data or telling a story with this data to your audience. You would want to ask questions like, what do I want my audience to know or do with the data I'm presenting, right? would also want to ask questions like, how will I structure a narrative that leads to this desired action? You know, how is my data helping to drive a decision? They are not understanding how important it is for all presented data to have a purpose. So when you are presenting the data, it should have a purpose. Every single piece of that data should include or you include in your data visualization should further this purpose, right? If every single piece of the data you are trying to visualize does not have a purpose, it rather should be left out. So data storytelling helps to persuade and make the right business decision more quickly in businesses, right? And when you persuade your audience or your client in business, that means winning. You've won necessary winning. So that's basically what the storytelling with data is. We'll be moving forward to us to why data visualization with storytelling is important. Why do we need to consider data visualization with storytelling? So data storytelling is a new area of expertise that is becoming necessary in business. Every business you can think of today need data storytelling. It is certainly very important to be able to collect data process that data, and as well analyze the data. But there are other important skills as to, to storytelling rather, because the ability for you to communicate that visualization or that data effectively, that's the essence of storytelling. So you might have visualizations that might be complex to people. They don't know what it's on your visualization or they don't know what your data tells, right? But with storytelling, attaching a story to that visualization, it makes it more clear, you know, and you are going to be communicating your insights better. So data storytelling is important because it allows for effective communication of data, just like I highlighted earlier. You know, when data analysis is communicated effectively, it can improve decision-making, right? So when you um, communicate this data effectively to your client or your audience, you know, it can improve decision-making. You'll be able to make, you know, better decisions, you know, which reinforces your working relationship with your client. So if in a situation where you'll be able to improve the decision-making of your client, you know, you'll be strengthening your working relation with your client, right? They would always want to come to you for data insight as to the fact that you communicate data to them better. So this kind of data analysis can also help to change people's behavior and improve their understanding of complex issues. So data could be figures just like I highlighted before now, and they could be numbers. You know, some of these numbers can be quite complex or cumbersome to people. So with data analysis or data visualization, and as well coupled with storytelling, you know, it helps people to understand complex issues, complex numbers, complex figures, you know, to derive insight from them. You know, some of the other ways as to why data visualization with storytelling is important, you know, we have on the list we have, it's a very powerful um, competitor analysis model. So what do I mean by competitor? analysis model. So if your client is in a highly competitive market, you're constantly at risk of losing potential customers to competition. So say for example, um, Tesla um, was a new innovation in the um, automobile industry, right? Before Tesla, we had thousands of automobile companies out there. You know, Elon Musk actually came into the market you know, to be unique. So before somebody like Elon Musk would have to come into the automobile industry, he has to have a great data insight from campaigns and operations as to why his product is going to be viable in that market, right? So to draw a line between your client and the overall market, 
you'd want to identify competitive data insights from campaigns. You know, internal data also allows you to tell a story about a brand's personality and its unique strategies. Just like I mentioned, Elon Musk was bringing a very unique strategy to the markets, having cars that are electric, not just electric, but cars that last long. So this uh, Elon Musk brand's personality and as well his unique strategy to dive into the market. So all of this were a lot possible because data storytelling could identify data insights from campaigns and all of those. You know, second, we have that it boosts client communication and engagement. You know, so while agencies use many strategies to collect and analyze data, you know, managing an engaging conversation for an extended period of time with clients can be a difficult task for many agencies. You know, I think this is quite akin to some of the issues that project managers do face, right? They tend to um, try and manage a conversation for an extended period of time with clients, you know. So maintaining an, these conversations uh, with clients, you know, to boost this kind of engagement and communication, you know, you would need to collect and analyze data better to these clients so that you can as well keep them on their feet for an extended period of time. So building effective client communication goes beyond copying and pasting any information into a presentation, you know, and presenting it to your clients. You'd also want to use data storytelling to convey results, right? In an intelligible way and demonstrate the value of your service, right? So with data storytelling and data visualization, you can come up with some visuals for your clients. I think I'm putting this to the project managers you know, for you to be able to um, convey results in a very intelligible way, you know, and demonstrate the value of your service. Yeah, we also have that it creates a visual appeal to whoever, you know, you're presenting this data to. So it could be a client and or some set of audience. So as humans, humans are quite notorious for having an ever-shrinking attention spam. So just like we are listening to this um, KD presentation today, some people are not here. Some people are not even focusing on what I'm presenting, yeah? It's a notorious um, attitude of humans to have an ever-shrinking attention spam. So with data visualization, you know, you can go a long way in communicating your results. You have visuals on your screen for people to, you know, engage with not just text, you know, because it can be boring sometimes. So this can be done through visuals such as graphs, charts, and more, you know. All of this actually boils down to creating a visual appealing visualization to the end user. So if I have a visualization that's quite appealing to the end user, it actually solves the problem of not having this ever shrinking attention, and it can as well strengthen the communication of my result. Right. So the reality is that clients not only want to interact with hard numbers, just like I highlighted before, data could be numbers and they could be figures, you know. So the reality is that clients don't want to interact with these hard numbers. They don't just want to see numbers on the screen, but they also need to visualize the success story behind these results. So if you are telling us today that um, Apple has sold 1 million products over the last five years. That is actually a success story to talk about. But if you have to tell me that Vivo or Lenovo has, has um, sold, um, you know, lesser products last year, you know, you will be telling uh, potential investors that there's no success story to their engagement in the previous year. So there are no reasons as to patronize Lenovo or Vivo, for example. So yeah, um, combining elements of data, information, knowledge, and insights into a visual format can incredibly valuable, be valuable rather in a client's reporting. So when you are trying to report, you know, your data insights to a client, bringing visual format 
into it can be very, very valuable. So this is storytelling. Okay. Okay. Data storytelling as well can present new perspective, right? It gives communicators the avenue for neural insights and perspective to data. So while you're effectively communicating your data or as well um, giving a story to your data, it gives more detailed explanation and as well can expose your audience or your clients towards new perspective. So if you have this effective communication of data to your client, you can as well open their minds to neural perspective. They tend to see you know, more insight from your data. They tend to identify neural trends and patterns you know, for them to uh, make you know, an extensive business insight. So yeah, those are basically um, why data visualization is very important and as well needed in a business. So we'll be talking about how to transform data into a story, right? We have key ingredients here. We have the data, we have its visualization, you know, and we have a story, right? So we have this data. How do we transform this data into a story? You know, your employees, for example, would be interested in your data and graph if you tell the story, right? So you wouldn't be showing a graph, um, you know, or a chart without telling a story behind that chart or that graph, especially a story that are part, you know, and few and has this um, sort of feel to it. So it is therefore necessary to personalize and, you know, have a context to this data to make it lively and to make it more interesting, right? So without a story, data is only numbers and then figures, but these are however useful, right? Well, you know, they wouldn't be so attractive or they wouldn't catch anybody's interest, you know, in the company if it's not lively and it's not interesting. So telling a story with data or telling a story with a visualization actually catches the interest of everyone, you know, that's listening into your, your data insight. So here is the data story equation in a more scientific light, right? So communicating information requires, you know, these three elements. We have the data, we have the graphic representation and the narration, right? Just like we'll see on our screen. All of these key ingredients actually go hand in hand, you know, to deliver a more effective data communication, right? So your your visualization or your storytelling should have a data attached to it, most importantly. They should also have um, a graphic representation to it, and as well as a narration. So the narration here is the story, right? So you have this visualization, you can as well tell a story alongside. So yeah, um, we'll be walking through as well how to get started with data visualization uh, with storytelling as well, right? We all know that telling a story with data gives it meaning, right? But many of us wonder how do we actually do this? How do we actually get started with data visualization with storytelling, right? So a good data storyteller always begins with their audience and establish their key message, just like I highlighted when we talked about the importance of having data visualization with storytelling. So for example, you know, you'd want to um, convey these key kind of messages, right? What am I trying to achieve with the data I choose to display? These are questions you should ask as a data storyteller or a data visualizer, you know, before uh, you present your data. So in this situation, you are trying to um, consider your audience first and the key message you are trying to pass, you know? What am I trying to achieve with this data I choose to display? Who are my audience? You know, are they older people? Are they younger people? Are they people, are they investors that you need to address in a more formal manner? You know, all of these questions. What do they care about? Um, I don't know if we are all exposed to this program they call Shark Tanks, right? Where you have investors and viable entrepreneurs actually come onto those shows you know, to actually pitch the ideas to investors. If investors 
are going to be um, putting down their money for that, right? So on shark tanks, you have the sharks, you know, and they come into that tank where you have investors. These investors actually have um, a certain interest. They want to hear something. They want to hear numbers. They want to hear profits. They want to hear long-time goals, right? So these are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. You know, what do this audience of mine, what do they care about, right? Are they, are they investors? Do they care about numbers? Okay, if they do care about numbers, I'll be presenting a lot of numbers to them in a visual format. I'm going to be telling them, hey, you know, if you have X, Y, Z, it will give you X, Y, Z. And if you have yada, 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 it will give you that. So what level of data details would they likely expect or appreciate, right? So you don't want to be having an audience such as investors and you'll be giving them, you know, a lot of shady figures or a lot of shady numbers. You don't want to give them exact numbers. You know, you want to give them things like um, in the year 2021, you know, we had um, 600 million uh, in profit from my business. You know, it keeps growing and all of those. They need to hear those kind of things. Those are the kind of numbers they want to hear. So as a good data storyteller, you want to have all of those things in mind before you actually present your data, right? You know, there's also the big question, right? Which is your big idea. Before you present something or before you present a data rather, you'd most definitely have a big idea to that data. So I don't know if we've all um, come across um, this keynote speech by Mr. Bade on TEDx, where um, he explained um, the social lender or the social reputation score, right? So this is actually um, the brain behind the social lender platform we have here in Bincom. So on that keynote speech, Mr. Bade actually you know, walked us through um, how the social reputation all started, right? He was giving us story with data. He was telling us about how um, in the olden days where, you know, people actually trusted um, uh, people with more social reputation than the other, right? And all of those. He actually walked us through how this um, social reputation has improved you know, trust among people and improved, you know, the way um, we tend to, um, um, the, the way we actually tend to, you know, interact with people in a way, right? So it also walked us through how, you know, this solution is viable in modern technology. So we've seen, you know, how important it is for us to have social reputation and with our social reputation, we can be, guarantors of different things, right? People can have us as guarantors for their loans. People can have us as guarantors for whatever it might be because we have this reputation on the social space, right? So that was Mr. Bade's big idea, right? And he actually conveyed this big idea with a story, right? So the one thing you'd want your audience to know with your data, right? Is whether you're visualizing your data or this visualization of your data is really necessary, right? With this story you are trying to tell, will it be easier to understand? Does this story you are trying to test, does it provide context? Is it relevant? You know, and all of those. So including a visualization just for the sake of it, you know, can be confusing. So you don't want to put out a visualization just for the sake of visualization, right? You know, and it actually reduces you know, the impact of your story, you know, remember that bad visualization can be worse than none at all, right? So it's better to even um, not have a visualization if it's bad, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, another key important thing in getting started with data visualization and storytelling is the importance for us to choose the right kind of graphs to visualize your data, right? So below here, we have different kinds of graphs that are quite common, you know, to visualize data. So one of them here is the bar charts. We've uh, most definitely seen these bar charts in one way or the other, right? So bar charts 
are great for making comparison between two things or more. <clears throat> so yeah, we have it on uh, the diagram here. We have 2020 um, quarterly one and 2020 quarterly two. So this actually shows a comparison between what happened in the first quarter, what happened in the second quarter and the third and the fourth. Yeah, so they can be used to show the change over time, right? Just like we see that these bars have different sizes, right? We have the blue bar that is you know, quite um, lengthy and we have this other one that um, is lengthier than that and also actually, these actually shows um, change over time. So it shows that um, in the first quarter of 2020, we had a time where we had 40K of new re revenues. And we had a time where we had 50K of new revenues, you know, and all of those, right? So that's a bar chart. We also have um, pie charts, right? Pie charts are as well likely to bar chart, but of a different shape, right? So sometimes it's often misused and people feel, you know, they shouldn't use it at all because the bar chart actually serves this purpose. But it's also a, a kind of visualization if you'd want to be dynamic with your visualization. You wouldn't want to be having bar charts every time, right? You would want to have a change, something that can, you know, visually appeal people in a different manner, right? So we'd have pie charts in this way, right? So this is what a pie chart looks like. You know, pie charts can actually show you the volume of a particular data. So here we have 40% volume you know, on the blue train, 30% on the green, you know, 10 on the red, and so. We also have area graphs, right? We've seen these area graphs so many times. I think most of us that are quite familiar with Google Analytics, you might have seen or the Google console rather, you might have seen these area graphs before, right? You know, they are very good for showing total change over time. Just look like we can see on the diagram. Um, here, there was a trend, right? And over time, these trends, you know, either increase, they come to the peak, you know, they go down. Okay, just like, and let me just use the financial term. When they go bullish and they become bearish, you know, they become ranging and all of those, right? So area graphs are actually good for showing this kind of data that changes over time, right? When there are several categories of values contributing to a total, for example, if you wanted to show the change in performance of four different sectors of the economy, right? You know, we can see for the agricultural sector, you know, there was a change over time, right? We had the time where we were importing rice, you know, to the time where very important at all, right? We had um, as well on the oil sector, right? Where, you know, there was subsidy attached to um, the dispensation of oil, right? And now there's a trend as to no subsidy at all and all of those. We've seen OPEC prices increase. We've seen, you know, a change in trend in the oil market amongst the, uh, the giants of oil, Russia and Saudi Arabia and all of those. Those are actually trends to look at. We also have scatter graphs, right? This um, actually shows the relationship or the correlation between two things, right? So just like we have it on this diagram, we have several points. We have the red points and the, um, and the blue points. These are actually showing the correlation, right? Or the relationship between this blue point and the red point, right? There are also great ways to spot outliers, right? So what are outliers? Outliers are basically um, some parts of your scatter graph that is quite distant from other points. So for example, if we have a point here, for example, um, these points can be then, you know, identified as an outlet, a distinct point itself. So these are scatter graphs. They are more um, um, important in the scientific um, world where you have to visualize a whole lot of data points and stuff. You know, you want to use scatter graphs for that. Yeah, we also have three maps, right? So these three maps, 
you know, a great way of to compare things that are in a hierarchical, you know, um, form, right? So we have things that are hierarchical, you know, we have, um, for example, just like we have on the diagram, we have the visualization of the millions of people, you know, living with HIV, you know. Um, all of this visualization, you know, has a hierarchy to them. So we can then see the amount of deaths by year. We can see the amount of infections. We can see the trend um, from when you have just STDs to um, HIV to AIDS and all of those. So these are another kind of visualization that people use, right? The tree map. So whether you're using basic data visualization software that would quickly elevate and call out key points or sophisticated tools and apps, remember that the best way, you know, to get, or the best way to get decision makers to act is through storytelling. So as a business, if you'd want to present a data insights to clients, you know, you know, for them to better make decisions, you need to act through storytelling. Yeah, so um, we've talked about, you know, data visualization and we've also seen how storytelling can enhance our visualization. So what are the various techniques that we can, you know, inject into our data visualization? Some of the things that we can include into our data visualization that makes it more effective, right? So one of them is creating a headline for every slide, just like we prepare um, slides for our KD presentation. You know, we sometimes do have to create headlines for each of our slides. So one of the best visualization techniques is actually all up, not, or rather it's all actually all about text, right? So imagine it's each slide of your KD presentation or your news article, you know, without a headline, right? The most significant data finding you want to share, you know, you know, would be missing, right? You'd want to have sort of visualization that tells us a brief explanation of what that visual means, right? So this powerful practice actually forces you to visualize, visually articulate your key insights rather and connect your slides in an easily recognizable pattern. So just like we have it on the diagram below, this is a visualization before it was transformed with a headline, right? We can see it doesn't really have a headline as to what this pie chart means. But here, on the other hand, we have a visualization with a ve very, um, um, what's it called, with a headline. And this headline actually tells us that, okay, mobile is changing the way people shop and buy things. You know, we can see how more visually appealing, not just this is, but as well more informative because it has um, a headline attached to it, you know? So there are other ways to actually bring your story to life visually, right? You can use call out. So call out allows you to create a focal point for your key metrics on your slide. So just like we have on the diagram below, we have this particular kind of visualization that's showing a trend. On this visualization, you cannot tell too much on it because we only see that it's going, you know, in an uptrend, right? We are seeing an uptrend here, you know, a little bit of ranging, but we can't really tell what this um, chart says, right? Unlike this next diagram on by the right, we can see that there are focal points to them. We can see that at this point, there was an average click through rates. And this point, we have average open rates as well. So all of these focal points helps your visualization to be more informative, right? So you'd want to consider putting, you know, call out or focal points, you know, of your key metrics on your slide for better um, informative visualization. Yeah, another thing that we can do to improve our visualization is to minimize the noise, right? We can, we've seen so many um, visualization that has clusters to them or, you know, the cluttering 
effect of those uh, visualization makes it less informative to whoever you're presenting to, right? So um, just like we have on the diagram here, you see this kind of visualization that has, you know, so many um, axis labels that, you know, they are not quite informative. The way the trends are being placed on the chart are not informative at all. So seeing this kind of visualization, you wouldn't know what it means. You wouldn't know at which point, you know, you had this or that, right? But on the other hand, you know, um, we can see how we've tried to minimize the noise on this visualization. We can see that we have a more informative uh, visualization that tells us exactly what's happening. So this is a visualization that shows um, social media, you know, the popularity of social media amongst young adults. So we can see here that from 18 to 29 years old, you know, we are always having this um, uptrend of um, engagement with social media, right? Unlike people from 30 to 49, you know, they have a fairer um, um, uh, media engagement with social media. And for people, for example, from 50 years to 64, you know, quite low, and 65 upwards, you know, we are seeing, you know, more like a ranging trend in how they engage with social media. So this is how informative, you know, um, a visualization can be when you minimize the noise. You don't want to have a visualization that has so much on it that makes it less informative. Yeah, so another thing, you know, to improve your visualization is to consider photography, right? You'd want to include pictures. Mama, you want to. Uh, uh, okay. We are behind, behind, behind schedule. Okay. So uh, let me try a roundup. So, yeah. Like, considering. Uh, seconds. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so we are considering photographs, right? We want to include photographs and uh, videos on our visualization to make, to enhance them. So in the summary of all of this, you know, combining data visualization and your narrative, you are able to tell an engaging story. Anyone can understand that client to actually remember, right? So, you know, not only does it communicate the value of your service, it's a thought provoking way, but also creates a level of transparency and accountability between clients. So we also want to uh, try and explore uh, data visualization with storytelling. Thank you. We had a lot to say, but yeah, because of time. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for listening. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can bring them forward. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mohamed. Um, this was really, really informative. Although due to our time, we won't be taking any questions for today. Uh, I just saw your hand, but then this 9.45, uh, we need to go for a different stand-ups. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. You can, you can reach out um, privately um, to Mohamed or you could bring your questions tomorrow. If there's time, uh, Mohamed will be here by tomorrow for the next KD section. So I think he can still answer your questions. Yeah, but for today, we, we can't take any questions today. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining the section. Wishing everyone a lovely working day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. <laughs>